Holy crap, the AC smells so bad. It smells like wet dog. I mean, wet towels. If you're anything like me, I like to set it and forget it. If it's hot, I'll lower the temperature. If it's cold, I'll raise it. I usually keep the Tesla on auto climate and let it do its thing. The con with that, however, is that the AC is always running. Not only that, because we have a Tesla, we spend a lot of time in the car with the AC on while we wait for the car to charge or even watching Netflix. This in turn creates a lot of moisture. Now, this just isn't with any Teslas, it's also with any vehicle with AC. If you keep the AC always on, after a while, you'll notice a musty, moldy smell. That's the smell of the evaporator and the AC drain when it doesn't have enough time to dry. And if the AC evaporator doesn't have enough time to dry, it's a breeding ground for bacteria, mold, and disgusting stuff. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to clean the AC evaporator, as well as change your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y air filters. So having a nice, clean smelling home is awesome. But the second I get into my car and turn on the AC, it smells musty and gross. Another reason that can cause that dirty musty smell are dirty cabin air filters. When any leaves, debris, or dust enter through the air intake from the outside, it filters into the cabin air filters, and over time it can get super dirty, restricting the airflow, as well as not being able to filter the air well. Tesla recommends changing the Model 3 and Model Y air filter every two years. They didn't mention anything about miles, which is really weird. And I found two years is way too long between changing your air filter. However, this does depend on where you live as well as how much you use the car. For me, we logged in over 12,000 miles in our Tesla and we use that thing for everything. And although we live in SoCal where there isn't that much moisture, the AC smells so bad. Now, when I changed the Tesla cabin air filters, I thought it would be super easy. I mean, the car is so easy to maintain. However, it wasn't as easy as I thought, but it wasn't the most difficult either. I mean, with a Toyota or a Lexus, all you have to do is open up the glove box and that's it. But with Tesla, it requires a little more elbow grease, but it is possible. Now, before we get started, there are a few things you have to purchase or you need before you change your cabin air filters. Now, if you decide to go with aftermarket air filters, most of them do include things like a trim tool as well as a T20 wrench. So you have no problems there. However, if it isn't included, make sure to pick one up and I'll make sure I link some of the stuff in the description below. If you have a Model 3 or Model Y, you only need a T20 screwdriver or a wrench. But with Tesla's, depending on the manufacturing date, they always change random things. However, I have seen a consistency with Model 3 and Model Ys that are updated this year with a T20 screw that can be easily taken out with a T20 screwdriver or with a socket wrench. If you're also suffering from smelly AC syndrome, you also need something to clean the evaporator and all of that nasty stuff. For me, I went with Coolit Evaporator Foam Cleaner and it worked great. And lastly, you'll need your replacement air filters. Now with Tesla, they use two cabin air filters at once, which is crazy and which is probably why it doesn't need changing as often as a regular car. You can do a whole nother video on the debate between the different types of air filters to purchase for your Tesla. However, overall, there's only two types of air filters you can buy. You can buy the one similar to OEM, which is the pleated air filter type. This is great because it ensures an exact fit and it doesn't mess with any airflow restrictions. Or you can do what I did and upgrade your cabin air filters to something a little more powerful. I purchased the X Techner HEPA air filter and I love how it's a high density HEPA air filter on one side and on the other side, it contains activated carbon. Now I heard a lot of rumors to be careful when installing aftermarket HEPA filters in your Tesla because it can restrict the airflow and potentially damage the HVAC unit. I tested the air on full blast with the OEM air filters and it was definitely strong. Whoa. Then I tested again with the aftermarket HEPA air filters. The air actually does not seem as strong. I noticed that it most definitely decreased the airflow. What was on speed 10 felt more like a speed seven or eight. And honestly, it makes sense because there's more filtration in the filters. It's bound to decrease the airflow. However, for me personally, I need as much airflow as possible, especially with the dogs in the back seats. So the next time I do decide to change my air filters, I'm going back with the Tesla pleated air filters instead, just so I don't reduce my airflow and cause any sort of issues. Also new Tesla Model Ys now come equipped with bioweapon defense mode with actual integrated HEPA air filters. And if you have an older Tesla Model Y, it should be available as a retrofit soon, which is awesome. 
Now I wanted to see how well the HEPA air filter worked at filtering smells. So I decided to spray a ton of Febreze outside of the car and see how long it took or if I could even smell the Febreze inside the cabin. When I was inside the cabin, however, I could definitely smell the Febreze, but it wasn't a strong scent. It was a more diluted, neutral smell, which shows that the HEPA filters and the carbon does work at filtering out the particles. Overall, it's a solid upgrade to the OEM filters if you want something that filters a little bit better, but don't mind decreasing your airflow slightly. Now on to changing the air filters. Since we're also cleaning the HVAC and the AC evaporator coils, a lot of fluid comes out from the bottom of your car. So I recommend doing this outside in the driveway. Okay, so as you can see, there's four tabs. One, two, three, and four. So this is what the tab looks like. It's super easy to remove. I did it on purpose, very easy, doesn't break. But then you'll see that there's four of them, so you just have to kind of remove all of them. So there we go. There we go. And then you just pull it down, and then you have a speaker, and then this thing, easy to disconnect. Just kind of have to push down on this. And then pull out. This one is just a little speaker tab. This one just kind of has a little tab in here, and this pulls out. So we can put that away. And if you're asking, this is the wire for my radiator detector installation. And then from there, we have to remove this piece right here. It looks easy, yep, it just kind of comes out. Very simple. First time is always the hardest because it hasn't been moved in a while, so take your time. So we're gonna use the trim tool. Just gonna put our finger in here. As you can see, they're all held in by these plastic clips. However, there's the clip right here that's like impossible to take out. So I just have to use a little bit more elbow grease, I guess. There we go. Just took a little bit more effort to take out. So this middle area will probably be the most difficult for you guys because there's not only a plastic clip, there's also a plastic piece here right there that it's held by so that's probably the hardest that middle part and then if you look i still have one more clip that needs to be taken out right there oh god so it really helped for this bottom part right here i just kind of pulled from the bottom and i was finally able to remove this piece so these are the hard ones right here because that anchors to these points here here and up here too so that was the most difficulty getting this out with my model y if you guys want to take a look these are all the attachment points there's a ton of attachment points one of them has a plastic piece i broke it off on accident but it'll still fit in there so shouldn't be too big of a problem the biggest issue i had was this one and this bottom one here just because there's not that much leverage to kind of pull it out. However, all of these are clipped, so it is all easy to pull out. Now in older Model 3s, there used to be a high voltage wire running along the cabin air filter, and it was totally safe. You just shouldn't cut it or bend it or break it. So this year looks like they redesigned it, so there's no orange wire that would get in the way of me replacing the air filter. So see how this year they put the bolt on the bottom, which made it a lot easier. However, last year it wasn't the case. Now again with the Tesla cabin air filter cover, they ended up changing the screw somewhere down the line. But if you have a socket wrench or a T20 screwdriver, you should be good to go. Honestly, the T20 screwdriver is super cheap, so why not just get it? So I'm just gonna untighten it there. So the new Model Ys, mine is a 2021 for um, May build. So I definitely redesigned it. So here it is, it just falls off. Don't lose it either, because it's not the biggest 
This just kind of popped right off. This is the cover. Now we have the air filters in the back. There's two of them and they have these tabs here. So we could just pop it right out. Wow, that is a tight fit. Here is the Tesla air filters, 12,000 miles and it's super dirty. So there's one. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this one up for the second one and there we go, it just pops out. As you can see, the arrows point this way towards the center console, which is the way you want it to go. Second air filter, just as dirty. Ugh. Look at that. I'm gonna be using the AC cleaner and I'm gonna place that AC cleaner inside of this hole as far down as it can go. Okay, so I moved the car out into the garage and now we're gonna clean the AC evaporator in case there's any mildew or any of that smoldy smell that I have. And for that, I'm using this. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this tube down where the air vents are. That's gonna lead it right to that evaporator and just kind of fill with foam and just kind of clean everything out there. And then all that liquid's gonna run down into the drain on the floor. Okay, shake the can well. So now it's filling with foam. So now the foam is working. I give it about 15 minutes for it to kind of work and do its thing and it will drain at the bottom. And if you look, it's already starting to drain all the way to one. Run that for about 10 minutes just to kind of clean everything out. Definitely smells much better though. Then after, I'm gonna go ahead and put the air filters on. Okay, so it's been the right amount of time. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the filters now. This is the first time I'm inserting it. Let's see how easy it is. Just kind of goes in there. There we go. All the way in, done. This is the second one. All the way in. And that's it, that's so easy. Okay. Done. It's in, inserted all the way. That's what she said. There we go. So it just kind of snaps into place there. I'm just gonna use this. Try not to lose the screw. I feel like it's so easy to lose this screw. I'm not gonna lie. So be careful when you're screwing it back in. Make sure when you do put it in, you just want to make sure it's all aligned properly. I know that black one in the middle there is going to be difficult to so just kind of make sure it's all aligned before you do it. So do it nice and slow. That's in. So don't rush it. I know you want to rush it because you want to be done. There, that's better. So that's done. So for this, we're gonna make sure we connect everything first. So the speaker's on the left. Plug it all the way in. And the speaker goes here. Speaker's in. This one shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, so now this one, you have this little piece that goes right into here. And you just have some clips up here, clip on this side right there at the edge, and that just kind of snaps in. So as long as this piece is aligned properly, it should be good. Yep, that's in there. That's in. And then these clips, open it up, find the hole, and then just put it in and just kind of snaps in. That's done, one in total. I'd say it would probably take like 30 minutes to do now that I know what to do. Hopefully this video helped you figure it out. But overall, it's very simple. And I honestly didn't know there was even a speaker down there. 
the lady's smoking, and normally I can smell the smoke coming from the air vents, but the HEPA filters is doing a great job at filtering the smell. Now being at home, I need my air to be clean. Afloya was nice enough to send me their air purifier for my home so I can keep my air smelling great. It has a built-in particle meter 2.5 reading and includes a three-stage HEPA filter. It works great. And in the few months I've had this, my filter went from a nice white color to a dirty brown, which is a good thing. It also has a UV light sanitizer, which you can turn off if you need to, to help clean the air even more. Regardless, it's a great budget-friendly air purifier with an amazing price. It's only $160. $60 and I'll make sure to link it in the description below. Now one important thing that really helped me remove that AC smell was to make sure that the AC evaporator and the HVAC unit was dry. One way to do that is one or two minutes before you arrive home, make sure you turn off the AC, turn off the recirculate air mode, and max the fan speed to 10. Doing that will help dry out any type of moisture that the AC unit may have caused and accumulated in the vents as well as the evaporator. And that's it folks, it's not that hard and once you know how to do it, it becomes much easier. Luckily, we don't need to change it that often and it's way easier and saves so much more time than going to a dealer or a car shop and having your car serviced for an oil change or timing belt process. Anyways, hope that helps guys and I'll see you guys next week.